Good afternoon and welcome to the Middle East Forum's webinar and podcast series, Israel Insider, this week with Alex Selsky. I'm Stacey Roman and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Mr. Alex Selsky, Senior Advisor to MEF's Israel Victory Project and lecturer at Hadassah Academic College, join us this week to update us on the latest events in Israel. Mr. Selsky will be giving us a briefing on current, the current situation in Israel for 15 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A from the audience. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Mr. Alex Selsky. Hi, Stacy. Thank you very much, and good uh, evening from Jerusalem to all. Well, this week, the past week, is very, very intense in many fields in um, the war in Gaza and uh, a more intense situation in Lebanon and definitely Judea and Samaria and in politics and um, in tensions between Israel and uh, the White House. So these are the issues that I want to run. Um, to 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 summarize for you the major things during the uh, next uh, fifteen fourteen minutes. So this the first thing that definitely we must start from is that this is the second week uh, since the ceasefire is over and Israel heads to uh, operates in southern Gaza in uh, primarily in Khan Yunis, which is uh, the second biggest city in. Uh, Gaza Strip and a very big um, base of uh, Hamas. Uh, I remind you that uh, before the ceasefire Israel, the IDF concentrated primarily in the northern Gaza, in, in the Gaza City, which is the biggest uh, city in the Gaza Strip and the, and the symbol of uh, the regime with uh, all the biggest... Uh, Institutions located in it, like the parliament and uh, and uh, court, in in it, the IDF still operates in northern Gaza, but it's uh, it heads to the south, and the situation in the south is much more complex, primarily because the a big part of the uh, civilians from Gaza City from the north of the strip went to the south and there is a huge uh, concentration of population there and uh, and uh, there is a very very difficult uh, uh, health situation there and everybody was actually in Israel uh, you know was scared that IDF will not be let to uh, to fight in the, in the south and that the a ceasefire will not be renewed, but we see that Israel goes to the south and fights in the south, and uh, Israel started to uh, to uh, pump a uh, seawater into the tunnels of Hamas, and we see that Israel operates very strongly in the south and in the north. Uh, yesterday was uh, actually. Uh, the whole past week was very, very painful in terms of uh, uh, losses. Uh, last Thursday, uh, a son of uh, the former chief of staff, Gadi Eisenkot, fell. Gadi Eisenkot is uh, a major member of the uh, war cabinet that was created after Gantz and Eisenkot. It joined the government with uh, the uh, uh, the war government with Netanyahu, and the day after, Gary Eisenstadt's son fell. His nephew, uh, the son of his uh, sister, fell as well. And it's it, it, first of all, it's a huge loss uh, for one family, and definitely very very symbolic. You know, in Israel, you can see that. You know how how true is this war in terms of you know the leaders are not hiding and they don't hide their children. 
their children, the children of the leaders in political and security echelon are fighting. It sharpened the difference, though, a, and many people spoke about it because it was impossible not to, the fact that a, the uh, elder son of Netanyahu was uh, abroad in the United States in Los Angeles yeah. until just two weeks ago and just came back. Um, and yesterday, 10 IDF soldiers and officers from yeah. Golani Brigade fell. It's the biggest, it's, it's, yeah, so yesterday actually was the day with the highest losses. Very hard day, very hard day, very hard week. Um, and, uh, and, uh, we also see in terms of the, um, uh, the success of the IDF in the South that we see more and more pictures every day of hundreds hundreds of Hamas um, militants and terrorists that surrender and we see them in you know naked in just underwears uh, surrender yeah, I think we get some critics you know some some critics from the world I don't think we should think about it I think we should show that we win. And that we that they surrender, and that's what matters. Um, we see that concerning the captured, we wouldn't see any new deal. We saw some information about some kind of a deal that the French government tried to uh, to you know to to organize, but we don't see any real information about any. New Deal, but we do see that more and more we get information about those who were captured that they had, that they were found dead. Um, a few words maybe about the uh, you know about the home front situation. First of all, uh, this week is a holiday week. It's Hanukkah, and Hanukkah is a very very symbolic. A holiday, you know, we in IVP and Israel Victory Project speak about it for years, and I was writing many op-eds about the fact that you know we should celebrate victories in our tradition, and Hanukkah is a very good example where it actually was and is a victory day over Greeks, but we, you know, we forgot to uh, we left the culture of the spirit of. Uh, the victory for 2,000 years because we were, you know, we were weak um, in diaspora. And, uh, and you know, this time and this Hanukkah, we, we see how the spirit of Hanukkah gets back as a victory day and lots of images and, 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 and visuals from Gaza, how people light uh, you know, uh, Hanukkah candles and speak about victory that, you know, that the IDF of today is the modern Maccabees and it, you know, it lifts definitely the the spirit, uh, this usage of Hanukkah um, uh, and it's something that uh, that is, you know, very symbolic these days. On the other hand, it also gives a very big challenge for the home front, and I can tell you that as I'm still in, the, you know, the reserve service in home front command, and this is a very big challenge because, uh, you know, in 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 schools, the majority of Israel is even though there are still um, rockets, uh, the majority of Israel is under regular uh, format of studies. And with you know restrictions, definitely, but uh, many many children are outside, and uh, because of the holidays, and uh, and it, and, it, and it means that it's you know greater a challenge for you know providing security for 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 the home front. But what we do well so far, um, I would like to say a few very important words about the other fronts, you know, about Lebanon and Judea and Samaria. In Judea and Samaria, there are uh, also, uh, you know, IDF activities and the and the Lebanon 
Bora is very active, more and more active. And uh, just an hour ago, just an hour ago, the major general, um, Rafi Milo, who is the uh, commander of the Home Front Command, on his uh, meeting with uh, citizens of Kibbutz Yad Mordechai, which is one of the kibbutzim next to the border with Gaza, told that we are preparing for war with Lebanon and we already even set a date for it. He didn't state what is the date, but he stated that we understand that this is the major challenge. And um, uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, one of the questions in our talk is, uh, will Israel be let to continue? So we already see tensions between Israeli government and uh, the White House, and we hear Biden says, that Israel must, uh, you know, uh, lower the intensity of uh, the IDF activity in the south and Gaza because of the civilian crisis there. And uh, he even told uh, yesterday, I think, or today, that Israel must change the government because of those within the government that oppose to uh, the Palestinian Authority uh, will get the control of Gaza after the uh, war, after Israel uh, dismantles uh, Hamas. Uh, Netanyahu opposes the return of PA to Gaza loudly, openly, and he does that not only because this is his position toward the White House, but also for internal politicals, political um, uh, goals because he understands that that what will distinguish between him and Gantz, who is the major opponent and the major competitor to uh, Netanyahu. That also shows that Netanyahu sees himself continuing, even though there are many, many voices, you know, that he must resign, even from Likud itself. New polls show that Likud polls very, very significantly up to 17 mandates and Benny Gantz goes up to 37. Lieberman is on eight. And and here is very interesting also to say that within uh, the party of Gantz, Gantz himself, you know, he doesn't speak openly that they must resign, but many voices within his party said that they must resign because of the tensions also over the budget, which uh, for their opinion doesn't go enough to the war goals, even though Gidon Sar, who is, like I remind you, who is a party uh, within the party of Gant says, no, we will stand till the end of the war, which gives to Netanyahu, you know, much of stability uh, so uh, so the politics are back very badly and and uh, the whole thing of pa is uh, you know it's 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 a good instrument for netanyahu to you know to to oppose not only for outside but to to use it as a as a very good instrument to distinguish himself from Gantz, as i said and um, also maybe something that I must um, say that uh, today, today Netanyahu said in a concerning the if if Israel would be stopped, he said that you know Israel will not stop until victory. You know it's almost quoting our campaign, our of uh, Israel Victory Project campaign. We have a digital campaign that says no stopping until victory. So Netanyahu, you know, literally quotes us and says today that we will not stop. Um, it's very, very interesting and challenging to see w how it will develop again against the White House and against uh, the within competition with guns and what, 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 you know, what it will say about the budget. By the way, by the way, very important also, Thing to mention that the uh, hearings of the uh, of the um, uh, case of Netanyahu are back. However, his uh, his uh, 
lawyers will just say that he's busy and it's in, you know it's impossible to get him from uh, you know his attention from war so apparently apparently they will succeed to postpone it um well uh, Gans, by the way by himself doesn't say openly yet that he's in favor of getting back PA into Gaza but I think it's um, if we remember how he was acting as the security uh, minister it's 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 very very uh, expected that he will be supporting uh two state solution and return of pay into gaza well uh my time of uh, the first part is actually over so uh, please let's start with questions and i will expand uh during the the questions please thank you uh fascinating talk today um the first one, I sorry, I have a question. Um, how many of uh, Israeli, how much of the Israeli population would support uh, the the PA being in charge of Gaza? Very good question. I didn't see polls that asking uh, the civilians, but I definitely we definitely see that you know the whole public shifted very much to the right. I speak to you know my friends from the kibbutzim around Gaza where I grew up. Those who you know twenty years ago were you know automatic voters to labor and merits to the left. You hear, listen, they 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 speak like you know <laughs> average kind of activist twenty years ago. Things that I don't want to quote even. And 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 I think that everybody sees and understands uh, that you know PA and and many organizations, by the way, including us, uh, are very active to show that PA maybe you know don't do the ma the, the same level of terror activity, but support it. And, and and does and and are very active in uh, a international geopolitical and uh, diplomatic terror so i think that people understand that i don't know the numbers i didn't see any poll about that but i'm sure that if now there will be polls i think the majority of israelis today will 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 oppose will oppose um however you know memory of people is very short unfortunately so i'm not so optimistic but uh, but but the shift will be definitely uh felt thank you so much for that uh david levine asks the white house and president biden appear to be sending out conflicting signals regarding its willingness to support israel's goals at this time how is the Israeli government interpreting Biden's position? It's a very good question. I can tell you that um, I think there are different levels of you know understanding, and I'm sure that each party speaks openly for his crowd. Let's remember. You know, I don't have to explain it to to our viewers that you know the 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 American political system heads into the last year before elections, and that I think what um, will or already um, leads primarily the politics of of Biden and White House now more than the geopolitical goals. So I think that much of it, it you know, to, to say it simply, I don't know if all these statements are real. So maybe it's, you know, in, in you know, we know that in the West, usually real things happen in closed doors and, and then statements for public outside, you know, opposing to Arab leadership where, you know, they speak what they think outside and lie inside. Uh, so, um, so I don't know. I don't know. I think that, I think that, uh, if you ask me, you know, this is another hour of 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 of, of you know of explaining what I think. But I will summarize it very shortly. I think that 
geopolitically, White House understand that it must support Israel strongly, but domestically, politically, they understand that this White House and this president, this nominee to uh, the next elections has to speak differently for the domestic crowd. And that's what he does. He speaks, you know, he, he, he differentiates, I think. Very good point. Uh, Murdad Kansari asks, uh, can you say a few words about the Iran factor and that uh, and that of its proxies like the Houthi attacks on Israeli shipping? How do these factors play a role in the ongoing war? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's an important issue. I just didn't have enough time because it's not the leading, you know, the one of the major fronts. Uh, but, you know, I went to a lot last week uh, on behalf of the army to uh, to to have meetings with uh, <clears throat> and lectures uh, with, uh, you know, the evacuated, including, you know, my family members who were evacuated from one of the kibbutzim next to Gaza. And uh, and if you see that a lot is, you know, those who know a lot, a lot is you know, very, very tourist uh, a city and it's empty and uh, they're frightened by the Houthis and uh, I think that everybody understands today when when they see that Houthis you know attack not only Israeli ships that it's a international problem I think that they just you know it's it's just pirates you know I think it's business you know I think that they just use this war for business and 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 you know they just rob these ships i i i think that all i hope that all the world now will see that they must handle the problem of iran because you know who it is just 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 for, just risk you know uh, attack the international shipping from you know from asia to europe i don't i, I don't see how europe can tolerate that and the united states as well and Lebanon, I think it's uh, Western, the whole Western problem. If Biden and Europeans, you know, not Biden, if American, uh, any White House, uh, any administration and European governments want to uh, fight China and want to engage India and, uh, and Saudi Arabia, they must support Israel to fight Lebanon, uh, to fight, sorry, Hezbollah. And to 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 put Iran, you know, back, it's it's not only Gaza. I think that Iran can give up Hamas easily, because they understand that Hezbollah is much bigger threat. And if Houthis succeed so much now, so they will say, okay, so we will give up Hamas. But you know, we still have Houthis who are much stronger than were before, and much more threatening. And we have Hezbollah, which is much bigger threat. So 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 okay, so. And Israel will, you know, lose so much power in, in its war with Gaza. So I, I think that Houthis and Hezbollah are big problems and Iran at the end. And I think that the West must support Israel to, to, to fight that. Um, I hope I answered. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Eric Selkov uh, states, when I read about the 10 soldiers killed yesterday, um, it seems like they had a choice of having a bomb drop on the area, but elected not to do that. Do you think the pressure for less civilian casualties affected their decision? Well, it's a big issue. You know, we right now, we IVP, we, do, we finalize now a big paper on... Uh, the readiness and ability of the Israeli uh, society, you know, to sacrifice losses in war. It's a very big issue. You know, I, I, I had a few conversations today. You know that the number of soldiers and officers, including, by the way, high rank officers that fell is almost now the number of the hostages so we, you know, and there are voices that say, guys, come on, stop. You know, you know that Gal Eisenkot, the son of uh, Gal Eisenkot, he fell in an operation to evacuate bodies of hostages. So some say, okay, guys, but, you know, these are bodies. 
So we, you know, we praise the, the, the life of hostages, but we pay by lives of soldiers. Uh, should we do that? Uh, and how much we should, you know, because at the end, the intensity of uh, the fire in Gaza is all question of, uh, you know, are you cautious and do you want to save uh, lives of your soldiers and or not? Because if you know, if you if you go with more fire, you will save your soldiers more. If 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 you go very very you know and you know very precise operations, so you you seek, you 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 risk your soldiers more. Um, so th th this this argument starts to develop how much should we sacrifice soldiers for the hostages, especially when we hear more and more than hostages, more and more hostages we find that are not alive. So should we, you know, lose two soldiers that were you know, for evacuation of two bodies, it's uh, it's a hard question. Listen, every Israeli you talk to has either has either close family or close friend or somebody close in Gaza or next to Gaza or active in war. So. Okay, and these are also children of, and fathers of, and brothers and sisters of. An impossible decision. Um, so on that note, sorry to keep it down here. Uh, David Fine would like to know, what is the current estimate of the hostages still being held? And are they all thought to be held by Hamas or some of them uh, being held by other groups like the Islamic Jihad? It's a very good question. I don't think that anybody has the answer why because a week ago we thought that it's about that it's 139 hostages. Since then few we know that are found dead. Uh, the hostages that we received before give information about those who were not alive. <clears throat> so more they give information more we understand. Concerning uh, all of the hostages in the hands of Hamas, you know, Hamas <clears throat> says that not. Now, we also understand that he says so, not necessarily because it's the truth, but because he wants to, you know, to, to, to give excuse why he cannot bring the hostages. Um, White House told that Hamas, you know, doesn't want to bring the women because uh, they don't want these women to tell the truth about what happened to them. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Some say that, you know, it's very, very possible that they really don't have all the people and that some of the hostages are not even in the hands of any military organ terrorist organization, but in hands of, you know, some so-called civilians. You know, we know about a doctor doctor in Shifa hospital okay who 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 held hostages in his house what is he civilian doctor hamas terrorist answer you on that note there was also the UNRWA teacher that was holding right. a hostage as well um so I, I did read today that the Swiss parliament was voting to defund UNRWA. Uh, is that something that Israel can be hopeful for, that, that the Western world is catching on finally? Listen, we see, we see definitely European governments, governments support Israel very strongly. First, because they understand the geopolitical meaning of this war which is much, much bigger than, you know, war in Gaza, you know. This is not war with Hamas. And, um, and also because they understand that this, you know, this is 
Listen, I saw today some movie that was running in WhatsApp groups in Israel of uh, a Muslim woman that complains in a very good English living in Finland that the only problem of Finland is there are too many Finns there and that the problem is being solved because there is a very big uh, Muslim immigration so it looks good and it will have good influence on Finnish society. So uh, I'm sure that, you know, Europeans understand that, you know, that some people, you know, gently said, some, 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 some people, you know, not exactly want to live peacefully and they wake up. But I think the governments understand that very well. They have to play again. They have to, you know, to pay the lip service for definitely the left ones for for the, you know, for constituencies. But, but I think that the governments understand that very well, very well. And we will see, I think, more and more governments like Switzerland that will just say, okay, God, come on, stop it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, so that brings us to the close of our webinar today. Thank you again, Alex, for joining us and giving us that update. Thank you. Of course. For our viewers and listeners, please note there will be no webinar on Friday, December 15th. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.